shouting anti-immigrant slogans, they were spreading hate and disinformation, particularly online. Uh, but the facts are that the suspect, while originally from another country, has been in Ireland for 20 years and is an Irish citizen. Now, um, there was significant damage uh, caused uh, throughout the city last night, criminal damage, violence, public disorder. The police say it was called by small, caused by small groups of violent individuals, but insist that calm has now been restored to the city. There's a police press conference uh, in the next um, hour where the police commissioner is due to give final figures in relation to the number of people who have been arrested and the extent of the damage done. But there are uh, shots on social media. People see that there was looting and that there was rioting. OK, well, thank you very much for your time this morning, Paul Reynolds, crime correspondent for RTE. Now, stay tuned, because in the next half hour, we're going to be talking about teen turnity leave. It's a thing, apparently. It is a thing. We'd like to hear from you about that, though, whether you think, or you maybe you do, take time off work, essentially, to give more time to your teenagers. And any tips for, for handling teenagers, dealing with teenagers? Is it as bad as everybody says it's going to be? Let me know. I don't think it's bad. I should just say it's just it's just different challenges for my teenagers. Give me your they tips. need you in different ways, we keep saying. 80295 is the text number. Hashtag BBC GMS or you can email us goodmorningscotland at bbc.co.uk. Now standing by is Gavin and I have a horrible feeling you need to ask us questions about curling that we will not be able to answer. No, that's okay. I thought you were going to ask me if I was bad in my teens. Uh, were you? No, I think I was okay actually. All I wanted to do was play football. Oh. Yeah. Well that's Okay. Okay. Let's ask your parents to see if they can be... <laughs> no, they're in their bed, you're okay. <laughs> they're retired, they'll be in their bed still. Uh, right, okay, I'm going to ask you something very quickly. Um, do you know if I'm talking about a biter? What is a biter? No, not a someone who bites you. No. I assume. No. <laughs> it's something not. to do with sport? Yeah, yes, absolutely, <laughs> yes, it's a family show. Uh, it's a stone just touching the outer edge of the house. It could potentially score a point. Okay. Now, the house in curling is the... What you'll see is the rings, or, the, you know, you'll see, like, the big targets and stuff. Yeah. That's the house. And a hammer, do you know what a hammer is? Oh, I've heard of this, but I don't know if I could answer it. It's ringing a bell, though. Scotland have got the hammer today in their semi-final. It is the last stone in yes. each end. I'd heard of that one. Right. Yes, and that's a very good thing to have, 100%. Okay. So let's kick off with the curling then, shall we, this morning. Good morning. Scotland's men set up a European Curling Championship semi-final against Switzerland with a tight 8-7 win against Finland in Aberdeen. The Finns had only won once all week, but pushed the defending champions to an extra end. Bruce Mowat's rank had already sealed the last four plates and made sure they stayed second in the standings with seven wins and two losses. Unbeaten Italy finished on top and meets Sweden in the semis as well. Scotland, as we say, aiming for that third successive title, beat Switzerland in last year's final and prevailed 9-6 in Monday's round robin while the Swiss lost out to Norway in their final group match. Skip Bruce Mowat has told our man Tyrone Smith just how important it is that they have have the hammer for this match and give his thoughts ahead of this morning's semi. Yeah, hammer is quite important. Obviously, like we, we always want to have a hammer in the start of a game. So um, yeah, it's nice to have that. And the Swiss boys are um, playing well this week, so we're going to have to have another game like we did in the round robin against them, and hopefully come away with the win. How are you guys feeling going into the the, the playoffs? I mean, I guess it almost feels like another competition starting now that the round robin's finished. Yeah, it always does feel a wee bit like that, but it's um, nice to know that we've settled into the competition pretty well. We've obviously got seven wins out of the, the nine that we've played, so we're doing something right, and um, we've got to just uh, stick together tomorrow and uh, see if we can get the win. And Switzerland, how, how tough a, a proposition will, will they be? You've obviously beaten them already in the competition. Yeah, they're always going to be a tough game. I think, I don't know how many times we've played them in the past, but the answer is a lot. <laughs> And yeah, uh, we played them at the Worlds last year, the Europeans in the final last year, so yeah, it's a, a rematch of that final from last year. Just a final one, I mean, was part a key objective in terms of getting to the playoffs, avoiding Italy, because a lot of people will be looking at how they've played this week and thinking they're the team to beat, and in some regards, does that almost allow, which is unusually, allow your team maybe to go a little bit under the radar? Uh, yeah, potentially. Uh, the Italians are on some... Um, amazing streak right now. I don't know how many games they've won in a row, but uh, yeah, they're playing really well and they're going to be tough to beat um, whoever's playing them. But um, it's funny, they have the uh, former Olympic champion and um, what, like seven time world champion in their semi finals, so it's going to be a tough game for them as well. 
It's the Scotland skip Bruce Mowat talking to our reporter Tyrone Smith in Aberdeen. You can watch Scotland v Switzerland live on the BBC Sports Scotland website app and iPlayer from nine o'clock this morning. Football now is the third round of the Scottish Cup this weekend, and in an hour we'll be speaking to the Cumnock Juniors manager Murdo McKinnon about his side's tie against Broom Hill. But before that, Premiership teams are back in action, and Kilmarnock manager Derek McInnes believes it's only a matter of time before defender Lewis Mayo plays for Scotland. The 23-year-old joined Kelly on a permanent basis from Rangers in the summer having spent last season on loan at Rugby Park and his manager was full of praise as he previewed his side's trip to Ross County tomorrow the Ayrshire side have yet to win on the road this season but McInnes insists it will come and in tennis Novak Djokovic told a group of British fans to shut up as they tried to drown out his interview with musical instruments after their team was knocked out by the Davis Cup team or by the Serbian Davis Cup team he had celebrated at the end of the first set by blowing a kiss to a British supporter heckling him and also cut these here in their direction at the end of the match. Gavin, thank you so much. We'll talk to you in an hour, won't we? Mm. We're also going to be talking in the next half hour to a child psychologist. She's going to be responding. It was basically an article talking about finding people, mainly women, who had taken time out of work actually, had a career break or taken time away to give more time and attention to their teenagers. Teen Ternity Leave, they're calling it. We're going to be hearing more about that and we'd like to hear from you as well. 80295 is our text number or you can use the hashtag BBCGMS. The time now, 7.30. On digital radio. FM. Your smart speaker.